who use pot and are proud of it. They swear it makes them better parents. Well, joining me now is Cheryl Schumann, who runs the Beverly Hills <coughs> Cannabis Club. Also with me, January Thomas, Amy Machado and Glenda Gurley. Welcome to you, ladies. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. So you are the pot mums of Beverly Hills. Let me start with you then, Cheryl. You, you seem to be the ringleader of this um, <laughs> intriguing group. In a nutshell, what is this all about? Well, um, I was diagnosed with cancer in 2006, and I used cannabis as a last resort to heal myself and was able to stabilize myself. And when I did that, I felt it was very important to come out of the closet as a corporate woman uh, who used cannabis to basically redefine the sector. There's a huge stereotype that's usually assigned to a cannabis user, and it's not exactly pretty, and it's not exactly a nice image. So when I got cancer and, and started using cannabis, I wanted to redefine it uh, give hope and empowerment to women who are like me, who are corporate women out there in the world, so that they could be honest about their cannabis use with their children and, and basically put a new face on it and redefine it. Because right. And all of you, have you all got children? Yes. yes. Right. Yes. And you all use cannabis regularly and take care of your kids. So the obvious question, let me come to you, if I may, January. You have a two-year-old, I think, right? Correct. Now, the obvious question is, people are watching this say, well, you can't take cannabis and take care of your two-year-old child on your own. Can you? I completely disagree with that. Uh, mothers, people, parents every day take Vicodin or medications uh, to help cure their pain or for anxiety, insomnia. For me, cannabis is a medication. I know my typical dosage. It's weighed out. I know how to space it out, just like someone would take Tylenol. What is your, what is your dosage? I like to eat like maybe half of a cookie. One whole cookie is a little too much for me. It depends on the strength. Um, sometimes I will take a few inhales off of a vapor, cannabis vapor cigarette. So you're not talking a lot. You're talking about a little bit, but you take it every day? Yes, I do. Like you would a prescription drug? Exactly. Mm -hmm. Let me come to you, uh, Glenda. Yes. What are the benefits? All of you have suffered various pains, anxieties, and so on. Do you feel a physical and mental benefit from taking cannabis? Uh, yeah, I do. Um, I feel like I'm able to be more interactive with my children. And um, they see Why? a big Why do you feel that? Because I was um, real sick, and they put me on these a lot of medications. And um, I started consuming cannabis, and they had to do surgery. I have a hysterectomy, and um, I had a lot of blood issues, and the cannabis was helping me. And once um, I finished with the, the procedure and everything, the, it helped me. And once I was feeling good enough to be active and everything, that helped me even better to be more so, for my kids. So it reduced, it reduced the pain? Mm -hmm. And it also reduced anxiety, you yes, believe? Uh, yes. And have you all found that? Absolutely. So good for anxiety, good yes. for pain reduction. Great yes. for PMS. Yeah, great for PMS. Right? Okay. I don't deal with that no more. <laughs> Pharmaceuticals and an intravenous morphine pump during cancer treatment. It was diagnosed as terminal. I was actually in the middle of planning my memorial service. Uh, when I had given up. And when I went into hospice care, my daughter, who's here, um, was my caregiver. And she held my hand and she said, Mom, we're going to take care of you. And we found out how to get a legal garden, started our garden. And now we've built a multi-million dollar company together. And it obviously is potentially going to be huge business going forward because this is clearly the way that America is moving on this debate. Amy, there'll be lots of mums yes. watching this at home saying, this is outrageous. Well, what do these women think they're doing smoking all this dope and they're looking after their kids. And as they're saying that, they'll be clutching a large glass of wine. Or vodka. Exactly. Or having a drink and <laughs> seeing no hypocrisy there. And this comes to the central nub of this whole debate, for me anyway, which is, is cannabis, marijuana, is it any different in terms of the potential harm to a parent, to a mother, to a wife, to anybody, than alcohol? Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely it is. And I, for myself, you I... Think, you think it's less harmful, more harmful, the same? Um, no, it's less harmful. Um, marijuana uh, is a much healthier way and natural than doing a Vicodin or the cocktail um, of, of whatever medications that you're taking. So if you're taking a cannabis and you're, and you're either doing it by a vaporizer or you're doing it by a candy or a cookie or something like that, it's different and you can control it and you don't want more because you know what you need. Okay. Cheryl, here's the thing. You've all got kids. When they get to be teenagers, mm -hmm. you know, my understanding about <laughs> marijuana is that it can be more problematic mm -hmm. 
in younger people, below the age of 25, say, than it is for fully grown adults. Knowing that, would you be happy for your kids to take cannabis from teenage years? Well, um, I wanted to address one thing a moment ago. The, an important fact about prescription tobacco and alcohol and cannabis, no one has ever died of a drug overdose using cannabis ever in the history of medicine. Mm. It was available for 3,500 years and could even be purchased on our pharmacy shelves until 1937. On the other hand, alcohol, tobacco, and prescription drugs account for millions of deaths every year. Now, getting back to the children issue, um, I had a different situation. I had to come out of the closet with my children because I had cancer and my children are grown. Um, you, you call it coming out of the closet then? Yes. The, the secret marijuana use? Yes. Well, here's what's happened. There are millions of cannabis consumers all across this country. And what's happened, because the media generally portrays this negative image and stereotype, people who have corporate jobs, high paying jobs, who have children, they're afraid they're going to lose their children. So they are afraid to come out of the closet. And this is very similar, uh, appears to the LBGT movement, the gay marriage movement. This is a lifestyle choice. Well, it's interesting. I'm we're going to reveal the results of a new poll later, but it certainly suggests that the, uh, the majority of Americans now, January, are moving in favour of legalising mm -hmm. marijuana in the same way that if you took the same thing on gay marriage 10 years ago, not a chance, now the, the slight majority are in favour of it. Even so, Pat Robertson came out yeah. in favour of legalisation. Right. <laughs> Look, you're, you're painting a very rosy picture, all of you, January, as if this is the greatest thing since sliced bread, and maybe it is, but what are the downsides that you have to be careful of? You have to be careful, just like any prescription drugs. We keep it very safe, locked away from, from our daughter. You know, keep it in a safe place where adults... Should we explain to her that it is a medicine? Mm -hmm. It's for adults. It's something that mommy and daddy mm -hmm. choose. I mean, you would take Tylenol in front of your children. I see nothing wrong. Well, look, America, let's, let's be honest. America <laughs> is awash with prescription uh, drugs and with over-the-counter drugs. I mean, are you going to any Walmart, any of those places, it's just like a sea of of pills that America takes. Yeah. Sanjay Gupta, I'm going to talk to you later, did a whole documentary about this. America takes more of them than any other country on planet Earth. So, you know, I, I, that's why I think the, the cannabis debate here is particularly interesting. Pierce, um, because I, because it is a you know like for like you got to say mm -hmm. how can this be any more harmful than taking Vicodin every day? I've taken Vicodin when I broke a load of ribs. It was hypnotic. I mean, yeah. by the end of yeah. it, I was. I was hooked on this stuff. Yeah. My children told me at their private school that the biggest problem is not cannabis. They kind of laugh at cannabis. They don't take it seriously. The mm -hmm. big fad with young people today are prescription pill yes. parties where they go in and raid their parents' medicine right. cabinets, put them in a bowl, they take a little turn, and they all take a bunch of pills. Because they've watched House happens. and they think, get me a load of Vicodin. I mean, this is actually a real point. A lot of those drugs that you get for pain relief and so on that you can get through a doctor are pretty addictive. The other thing too I'd like to address about cannabis, the thing that I've seen is a... Why do you call it cannabis and not marijuana? Because and sometimes the other marijuana is the slang name and cannabis is actually the true scientific name. So the actual drug itself is, is, is cannabis, cannabis yes. and it's become known as marijuana. And I think it deserves some respect, so I always call it cannabis. Okay, 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 even <laughs> though you're known as the Martha Stewart of marijuana. By the way, why are you known as that? Mm. Well, I was one of the first women to come out of the closet from the corporate sector. And not only do that, but I had a magazine that I built to a six and a half million dollar company. I have my own line of products and brand And you must products. be thinking, I mean, no disrespect, Cheryl, but you must be thinking if this carries on being legalized all over America, this is the biggest ka your business is ever going to see, isn't it? This is the green rush. And I knew when my health got better that I wanted to be a part of it and I wanted to lead it and hopefully be a good role model for other people to provide jobs. The, the bottom line is cannabis is here to stay. It's the toothpaste is out of the tube. It's not going away. And cannabis is not only a, a plant that can heal a multitude of illnesses, it can heal our economy and it can provide programs for single mothers who need childcare, for our veterans that are coming back from the war with PTSD. We're losing more veterans veterans in this country from PTSD and suicide and cannabis was even recognized by the VA administration as being helpful for that, that is very true it is true I mean a lot of these things you could see that it could be helpful for there will still be people let me talk to you about this uh, Amy there'll be people yes. watching saying no I'm just not buying this I've got kids if they take cannabis they'll start taking cocaine they'll start taking heroin it's the slippery slope what do you say I say that you need to educate your children. Mm -hmm. You need to talk to them and let them know. I have a 22-year-old, I have a 19-year-old, and I have an 8-year-old. Uh, my 22-year-old got involved with any everything other than cannabis because I was involved with cannabis. And I feel that he was just trying 
to do something out of the box because I gave him that education. Once I found out about his use, I definitely talked to him, got him some help, and now he is by my side. He works with me in our business. Because you make edible cannabis, right? Yes, I do. So what do you, what do you make? I make cookies, I make cakes, uh, anything. What kind of, what kind of, any varieties? Anything I mean, and everything you could do. My husband is a pastry chef. Uh, can you mix them with fruit and stuff like that? Can they have flavours? I mean, yes, how does it work? absolutely. It, it, this is fascinating. Yeah, I had no idea what to expect. I thought, partly, part of me thought, I'm going to get a full bunch of stoners in here <laughs> and it's going to be a very difficult interview. But you're clearly not, and you're a smart woman who've clearly worked out this is good for you. It is legal, and it is coming to America fast. So, ladies, thank you very much indeed. Thank, thank, thank you. you. Hot moms are